uh, from the HISF quota. And um, we are happy to be having another session with every one of us all. Um, as it has been known that um, HISF has positioned itself uh, to be a center uh, that assists scholars around the world in uh, who are seeking scholarship and um, admissions across universities of the world. So here is to another edition, and um, we are so glad to be here. Uh, without any further ado, the time we have so much wait for is here, and um, uh, we can't afford to keep uh, scholars waiting and uh, also our listeners who are ready to uh, have uh, what you have for us. And um, uh, let me say we are glad to have you here. And um, uh, scholar Ahmed uh, Olatunde Obashekuri. Uh, I'm very sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. <laughs> now, it's okay. Um, God willing, we'll be having two of our speakers here, but um, uh, unfortunately, due to one uh, reason or the other, uh, our second scholar is not yet here, uh, but we hope before the end of the program, uh, we'll have him here present as well. Uh, so, uh, jumping into what we have today, uh, we will be demystifying South Korea scholarship application process. And um, with us here today is uh, Scholar Ahmed, that I, like I have mentioned earlier. So uh, as a brief introduction, I'm going to give us uh, an insight into uh, the brief uh, knowledge I have about uh, our scholar here. Uh, I believe an average person in IIT, uh, SF would, would know a veteran scholar very well because uh, he's always uh, with us every time. So, uh, Scholar Ahmed is currently a researcher in the School of Robot and Smart System Engineering at uh, uh, Queen, Queen Park National University. Uh, let me just use KNU uh, as the name of the university in Korea, uh, which he joined in the year 2020. Uh, Ibag is MSc in Mechatronics and Robotics Engineering at the Egypt Japan University of Science and Technology, EJUST. Uh, in Egypt in the year 2019, under the scholarly support uh, by FACO and Co. Uh, his bachelor degree was in mechanical engineering, a lot of engineering <laughs> background, and uh, <laughs> a very nice one there, uh, from the University of Ilori, uh, Nigeria, under the uh, local scholarship. We see that a uh, scholar has been uh, all the time scholar, right from the graduate. To, to the PhD level. So um, he has uh, a local scholarship under uh, his bag as well from the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, PTDF. And currently he's researching into deep reinforcement learning implementation for social intelligence robots. Uh, while I'm giving the introduction of um, uh, Scholar Ahmed, uh, I got to know that uh, we have Scholar Ashraf here as well. Uh, and I'm glad to, to welcome him here as well. Scholar Ashraf, can you just say hi to the house before I give uh, a brief introduction about you? Uh, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you so, so much, sir. Uh, uh, it's so nice to be here. Personally, for me, uh, I'm glad I'm meeting uh, Scholar Ashraf. Uh, he's uh, a well-known. And um, I, I, I got to know recently that he's even an academic scholar because I have seen majority of his um, um, his poets. And um, I, I can't, honestly, I'm amazed right, right now. But uh, not to waste our time, honestly, uh, I'll give a brief introduction of Scholar Ashraf as well. And... Um, um, He's a co-founder, uh, his full name, Ashraf Akintola, is an entrepreneur, a researcher, an author, and a poet and a public uh, speaker. He's a founder of uh, the CEO of Nobukimat Limited. Uh, it is a development that is into leading the generation uh, of impact, prosperity, and sustainability. Uh, so, um, 
Scholastrap is highly regarded among peers and associate as a leading creative with great potentials to lead sustainable change. He has led fellow colleagues to conduct free online training and courses in bioinformatics for beginners and mid-level masteries in bioinformatics. Um, he has ambition and goal to educate one million researchers. A huge one at that. One million researchers, students, and enthusiasts in bioinformatics skills by the end of 2022. We hope this goal we achieve, uh, God willing. Uh, Amen. Uh, going by his um, um, education background, he's uh, a graduate of um, Bachelor in Science degree in uh, Zoology from the University of Illinois. And um, he later earned a master's degree in Applied Biology from KNU, the same university where Scholar Ahmed is currently. And um, uh, his master's degree was based on genetic diversity of uh, white flies. Maybe by the end of the program, he will give us some tips on what his um, research was all about and what we can also gain as uh, learners as well. And um, currently, he's at the is uh, at the same institute, uh, I mean, at KNU, at the laboratory of uh, phylogenomics and evolution <laughs> for his PhD. Uh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> we have times here, and um, I have to skip some. <laughs> so so um, uh, in the <laughs> in biomedical convergence, uh, convergence, science and technology with a specialized focus on the mitochondria genomes of mosquito species and a lot of times like that. So before the end of the program, I hope you will be able to share with us. So uh, without any further ado, I will leave the floor open to our scholars. Uh, we have scholar Ahmed. Uh, so I want him to build the cat and um, uh, we have, um, uh, you can add the floor, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am glad to be here. Um, Ahmed, Latin uh, It's really a great privilege to to be giving back to the community because uh, all this scholarship opportunity and the likes was also and uh, that I have an opportunity to, I mean, to also benefit from is not also uh, behind the what's it called the um, experience that I got from uh, scholars in ISF. So, I mean, it's just a great privilege to give back to the community. So, uh, uh, basically, uh, I mean, it's not really, uh, really something that is difficult to go about, just some sort of determination and then, and everything will be good. So, uh without taking so much of our time i would like to uh share my some my screen so that i will be able to have some uh presentation Uh, is my presentation on? Yeah, uh, with the, oh, okay. it's not available on the stream. You can start presenting. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, just as the moderator has uh, presented, I mean, there's no need to go through so many uh, presentation like that. So, and here is just some brief content, how to source for scholarship in South Korea. Uh, I'll basically be talking about uh, the institution-based scholarship, and then uh, I will show some basic demonstration and also the application process. Well, the application process is not something that is very difficult, but I mean, it's just some concerns that may ensue along the line is where I'll be and delving into um, some tips and some sources. So, Bobby. For getting started, let's just get ourselves motivated. So, I mean, basically, we might have heard that South Korea actually has the fastest internet speed. 
so in the world so uh, which is some of those privilege you will be enjoying by i mean applying to south korea so i mean according to the fast metrics so the internet speed in south korea is the fastest you have top companies in south korea the samsung we are familiar with the hyundai car we drive lg electronics we are familiar with gaming companies and the likes so and also we have korean language i mean i was surprised to notice that many people in nigeria already know how to speak korea even more than we that we are in korea so and then this is also not far fetched from the korean music and, and the korean drama that many of uh, nigerians do watch these days so and it's not really a surprise the there is a music of pragogna style is uh, was rated to be uh, to have 4.6 billion views on youtube so which means that this korean language is really getting uh much attention so i mean i met a scholar on youtube on uh, in linkedin and uh, basically uh, speaking to me in korea i was like okay <laughs> it's fine but unfortunately the person is not yet in korea anyway but i mean for to have uh learned some korean you'll be able to uh display the proficiency when you get here in korea so also these days uh, it's now offer an easy path to um, citizenship so especially for those that did science and technology uh, uh science technologies if you have either masters or phd uh you'll be privileged to uh, get your citizenship or permanent residency within three years after your graduation uh, to in some specific schools you can just scan the qr code and uh, down here to get some uh, information more in-depth information on how it goes and some other things like that so without much further ado after we've been motivated enough i will just delve into the main uh, presentation of the of the day so we are demystifying the south korea scholarship and basically uh there are different scholarships which we'll be talking about uh korean government scholarship which is what my able scholar ashraf will be talking about and then just i'm just giving an overview of what i have here so i mean generally it's fully covered i mean full covering of expenses flights everything is fully covered by the uh scholarship so and then but the thing there is that it's slot based and uh, it's limited so that's why we also have institution based scholarship so the institution based scholarship is generally like those schools that are outside seoul and the one that are in seoul so however most of the scholarship uh they depend on your grade level and some recommendations so but the most important part of it is that the scholarship and, and they are mostly tuition based so you don't have like accommodation you don't have some other privilege like that but your tuition is often co co covered maybe you may have 50 percent you may have 30 percent you may have 100 percent depending on uh, your grade level and so recommendation so there are other uh, university specific scholarship as well like uh, you might have heard about KAIST, DIGIST, GIST and some other <laughs> science and technology universities like that so uh, they offer some university specific scholarship and if you want to know more about them you need to go into their website some of our offers beyond just uh, um, tuition fee some offered more so and basically that's uh, that on them so uh for the institution based scholarship uh you can have undergraduate scholarship you can have a graduate scholarship so some of these uh, scholarship as i've said might be just 50 percent some might be 30 percent 70 percent and often is semester based like if you get 50 uh, percent or 100 percent in first semester if your grade is not or your the recommendation is not strong enough you may get 50 percent scholarship in this next semester or i mean depending on 
some other conditions and some other factors like that. So, but really don't be scared about this. It's something of concern, but anyway, but you shouldn't really be scared uh, because I will be talking about how you're going to be getting recommendation. So, which is a financing institution-based scholarship. You might have observed that most of these institution-based scholarship covers just uh, tuition fee, maybe 50%, maybe 100%, maybe 30%, depending on how it is. But you need definitely need to finance the remaining one. So how do you go about the financing? So you mean how to get the recommendation, how to cover other expenses, because tuition fee is not the only thing you are going to be uh, expending on. So which is what takes me to this demonstration. We have different ways you can, score, uh, you can source for other finances. And basically, that is true professor, mostly professors. So I will be showing you some ways by which we do uh, get, uh, what is it called, to get professor's recommendation and to get some other stuff like that. So the first means of sourcing uh, for um professor is through the eye brain so here in korea we have and sometimes they've shared this link on uh, uh, the uh, isf and uh, whatsapp group and the likes so i'll just be taking you through some things that is uh, necessary for you to look into and some things you should not be scared of I think your mic is muted. Mm. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. I think okay, we were so, trying to share the screen earlier. Yeah, I'm actually trying to share the screen. So basically, there is one thing we need to note from the beginning. Korean websites, we, have, we often have English version and we have the Korean version. Usually, the Korean version is much more updated than the and English English version. So, I mean, you need to kind of just be comfortable with uh, what's it called the Korean version of the website. So as you, to get the the more information that you really need to uh, explore. For instance, uh, this website, as we navigate through this uh, high brain global uh, net, you will notice that this is the English version. So I would kind of recommend using browsers like and um, google chrome hedge to allow them to allow the website and the browser to do the translation for you because uh it's better you navigate through the, the korean website uh, I, whenever you have the opportunity so for instance this time uh, in this case we are going through the what is it called the ibrain and uh, website the english english version so here you can check through some openings that are available based on institution or or some filtering criteria for instance we are looking for so trying to source for a professor in graduate for graduate admission so here is the english version i can click on the graduate admission here and you'll be able to see some list of um schools that are offering admission or that you may be able to see some professor these are the opened one these are the uh, uh, offerings that has been closed so but what you notice mostly here is that you are just seeing the admission for uh, opening for that specific school not really particular about the professor which i will be talking about it later anyway but basically i just want us to observe that so here okay so here this is uh what's it called the opening for this school and then you just click on it and 
if it's what's interesting. Basically, this is for uh, a business MBA admission, and you can go through the information here. But specifically, this is the admission schedule, which means that the process is not something that is, I mean, something that is eating. Oh, it's not showing. Sorry. Okay, so uh, basically this is for um, MBA admission and then uh, you can check through the information here. But what I'm trying to drive at is not yet established. This is the English website of the iBrain so this is what you can get but let's go to the korean version of the website of this iBrain. so here is the korean version of the website okay so and then you notice so many things here that is a bit similar to the other one but you kind of see the difference now so well based on my familiarity with the korean something website and the likes basically this is the uh Part that talks about graduate school so once you click on it you tend to see some other information that has to do with a uh, professors requesting students or looking for students and the likes so take for instance this is just an uh, artificial intelligence uh, based wearable robotics lab so department of international dddd and some other stuff like that so for instance if i this is talking about a particular lab so so this is talking about a particular lab now despite the fact that this website is in korea but i'm using google chrome so google chrome is doing the translation for me so i really don't need to worry about and um, limit my uh, what is it called chances by just looking at the english site there are more 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 stops in the korean site than the english site so here is a professor requesting for students and then this is basically what they are doing in the lab they are more about robotics i'm sorry for, for giving an example on robotics i mean um, this is my domain anyway but i mean but it just shows that uh, some science and technology uh, area specific are also something that is and uh, striving seriously in korea so for instance here is the website and then here is the professor telling you you can email me on this email this is my email and and basically you've gotten the information you need and sometimes some of this website also has the website of the lab like for instance this is the website of the lab uh we are able to this this okay, this and if you want additional information you can just you can go to the lab's website and then you see some other information about what the lab is basically doing so you some will put it at the front page that they are looking for students this this in masters in phd or for phd and you can contact the professor you can look at the publication i mean these are some of those tips that has been already been shared on an isf by some other scholars like that but basically what i'm just trying to say is that high brain korea uh, high brain website is a place one of those places where you can source for uh, professors and it's much more better to look into the korean version of the website so this is for lab based i mean a specific laboratory but on this other side is where you have for school based like admission that is currently ongoing in particular school so here here the ones that are bolded here are the one that are still ongoing and the one that are what's it called uh, not bolded are not and uh, they've expired anyway so you can also check through the website and you get some information about uh the um about the university and uh, this scholarship and what they ask to offer offer so you can click on this i'll go more into university specific scholarship but 
basically this is where one of those places where you can source for uh scholarship by professors and the likes in korea so i will go back to the presentation now Okay, so basically uh, what I'm trying to say is that you can go either visit the iKorean English version or the Korean version, uh, iBrain English version or Korean version. So you'll be able to get uh, the lab info and then the next thing is for you to send code, email and the likes. So now for university specific sourcing, you know, on the iBrain, and uh, website you're able to see that we have a uh, lab specific call and then university specific call so for lab specific call generally one thing you need to notice is that most korean universities they follow the same pattern like uh, if you look at the website and you're sourcing for you are looking for how, how uh to i mean what the scholarship the school offers and some other stuff like that and you want to source for professor in professors in that school so once you visit the home page you look for the graduate school you look for the department then they will have where they have the list of professors and under the list of professors some you just see their email and their specialization some you can see the uh professors and lab website so from there you can get additional information but if you, all what you just see is the list of professors and their what's it called and their and labs it's fine it's good so but basically uh you can do with what you have either full information about the lab or just the professor and his con Contact. These are our contacts. So I will show some demonstration on that as well. I'm currently trying to share my screen anyway. So I will be using my school as an example, but maybe if time permits, we can also use uh what is it called some another school that we get from the i korean i brain site so as to show that they follow the same pattern okay so here is uh kimpuk national university can you so as i've said you look for graduate school something that has, just has to do with graduates and the likes so so usually i mean from the menu we have the graduate school so from the graduate school you can see departments maybe i should just be sharing windows sorry let me stop the sharing it's preventing me from sharing another tab so Okay, so here is the graduate school, and basically you definitely just going to see the departments, I mean departments and the likes, so you can get some information about the departments and what's it called. So for instance, let's say we are looking for sciences, sciences and based department. So here are some departments in sciences and then, so we can check Let's say we want to check for major in food application technologies, uh, and you can see the you'll be able to get the website here under this logo. So here is the website of uh, food and biotechnology department, and then from there, well, let's see if it's possible for us to be able to 
translate this page if it's not possible then we can use our intuition to just do trial and error though i know where i'm going to but you can i mean assuming someone is just trying to traverse you can just do trial and error i mean how many men do we have we just have one two three four five so if you click on everything by the time you click all, all the memories you'll be able to get to where you are going to so this is first menu definitely this is home page so we are going back to where we started we started from so here this is another menu well in korea this is kyusu so mostly professor so so here if you gamble and you are able to get to the location so i mean it's not something that is much just click 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 you get to where you're going to so here you have the link to a professor this is one of the professor and then um and then you have the name of the professor you have the email so you have all what you need so in fact if you want to what is it called if you just want to get additional information here is the website to the professor's lab okay but you basically have what you have or what you needed so you can translate some stuff if is not already been translated by uh, Google Chrome. So, like for instance, just copy and then you can use Google Translator. So, so the professor is into about biomass and food biomass, and you get information the gist about what the professor is in. But you want to get additional information, you can just click on the website. Uh, the lab's website and then this is food bowel resources lab and then so that uh, on the front page of the lab so on the front page of the lab you can hear that you can see that the professor already stated that if you are interested in our lab feel free to email us and this this is we are looking for graduate students in msc phd as well as undergraduate students who are highly passionate about this, this you can join us in this, this, this so i mean some of these professors already have the information on their website so all what you just need to do is the school homepage, graduate school uh, the department and then you can see the professors you can get the email of the professor or some professor has websites so you'll be able to access their website and then you are good to go so by the time you just check a few of the professors uh, you'll be able to get what they are doing and then how you can move forward from there so you can get their current work and some other things like that but I mean, you are just comfortable with getting the information and the email and some other stuff about the professor, and then you can contact the professor for a recommendation or for uh, that you are interested in the lab and the likes, and you need to, you want to apply for admission in the department. So, so I'll go back. Okay. Before I go back to the presentation, so let me just show that the there is trend in how many of these schools, most South Korean schools, and what is it called, orient their websites, so which you can transfer the knowledge or the idea here and there. So let's say this is, uh, let's say this is this website, this school, and then uh, this school also is offering a mission and. We want to check some information about the school. So this is I bring Korea and the school specific institution specific uh, admission. We want to source for professor in that school. So this is the link to the school, and then let's see if Google Chrome translates for us. Oh, very good. Google Chrome translated for us. This is school admission graduate school. Just you just see graduate school. This is just the normal trend in Korean websites or Korean university websites. So from graduate school, you can check for departments, obviously department and labs here. So from there, you can 
move forward okay this is department these are laboratories in the school and then you can click on the lab from there you'll be able to get a list of professors it's just general trend in korean websites or korean university websites the home page the graduate school department you see the profs so some prof are they have email some does not have email and website some does not have websites i mean just get what you need and you'll be able to contact you can do some other search and findings so So moving forward, what I just said is from home page, you will graduate school, department, professor, professor's lab. That's just the general trend in Korean website, Korean university website. So you'll be able to get whatever you need. So and as for sending code email, so you can get samples from uh, ISF website or you can scan this QR code for the repository of ISF to get some sample. But however, just do not plagiarize. You know, these days plagiarism is even before plagiarism is very serious. But the internet that made uh, checking of plagiarism very easy in these days. It's nobody goes scot free. So do not plagiarize. So now, as for the admission process for institution-based scholarship, just as we've seen in some of the uh, demonstration, the admission process is just quite easy. Or uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's quite very simple like that because there are some concerns around the, along the line. But the thing there is that Korean, they are they stick with schedule. So don't worry about the schedule because the schedule is just going to be coincide. Like how this is going to happen by this date. This is what you should be expecting by this date. Within this period, this is what you should be expecting. All the road map is already stated and they follow they do follow it strictly or i mean most of the time so they are there with the dates so but the concern of many scholars even while i was also sourcing for scholarship my major concern is that i can't pay for application fee for something that i have not even been sure whether you will give me admission or not so you now use my application fee too <laughs> if i apply for ten to three schools so i'll pay application fees to each of those schools uh, it's not really something that i'm really comfortable with but i want you to be comfortable with it anyway so but the concern now is about the nigerian policy and nigerian bank uh, or uh, financial institution policy number one policy is that uh <laughs> number one policy is that you may not be able to use your naira card to do payments I don't know whether anybody see this coming, but maybe scholars are already experiencing it. You will not be able to use your Naira card to make payments, uh, international payments, which means that schools that has to do with application fees, you may not be able to make payments with your card. So that's number one concern. Most schools in South Korea, they require you to pay application fee, which you may, you will not be able to dodge. So they don't offer an uh, application fee waiver like some other. There is often no application with uh, fee waiver rather. So you have to do something. So I mean, the possible solution that I've itemized is you can see if you have been able to get professor, you can table your pro, uh, your concern to your prospective professor. Like there is this social restriction in my country. I don't know whether it's possible to get uh, your application PFA. But I won't really advise about this, but um, it's a it's a possible solution. However, the simplest way simplest way is to just look for Nigerians in South Korea. You, there are so many ways to get them. You can look at LinkedIn, filter from LinkedIn. You can places like ISF, uh, uh, our forum, our WhatsApp page. 
just drop your message. Uh, we I'm looking for uh, scholars in South Korea. Uh, this, 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 I need this information. And in fact, some so in, while you are traversing through some websites, you might have come across uh, what is it called some other scholars that are from Nigeria. Especially in Kyompok National University, we have Nigerian National and uh, Nigerian Student Association. So where we have numerous uh, Nigerians which you can reach out to, not to pay. Uh, I mean, just like that, but you can exchange. So many of them will need Naira. So you can just decide to say, okay, I have Naira. Please help me use your Korean one or your Korean, what's it called, to pay. So to pay my application fee, then you transfer the, uh, you agree on common exchange rates on how to pay for it. So otherwise you can also look for Nigerian, not just in South Korea. It's, I mean, it's just kind of simpler for South Korean to, uh, what is it called? Um, I won't say official rates, but you can agree on common ground because, uh, strictly speaking, Nigerians that exchange or uh, transfer money to uh, from South Korea to Nigeria, they get they do get a very very fair rate that is even equivalent to like that of black market. So we have like a website where you can exchange, do a currency exchange, and they will exchange at black market. So why do you want to, uh, I mean, everybody wants to make profit, not uh, why sacrificing for someone, I mean, not just to say you want to lose some money. If you want something, just agree on, agree on common ground. He or she may want to sacrifice some things, it's fine, but just agree on common ground. So, I mean, time will... Well, permit I would have shown you so shown you the exchange rates in some of those application and you tend to see that it's not the maybe four and ten or four four hundred naira per dollar or something that they are exchanging at. So, but anyway, that's just it. So another alternative is look for Nigerian Nigeria in other countries to exchange with. It's not necessarily South Korea. I mean, once the person can use his or her card, so. Okay, I will share the. And uh, once the person can use this uh, card to do, uh, was the international transaction? Definitely, it's going to be possible to use was the call to to pay for you. Though it's traversing through Korean websites may be difficult sometimes, but I mean it's something that is possible. But the other solution is just for you to get dollar card. Since you are going to doing so, is to be doing so many applications to different countries. And some of these countries, especially US, you have to pay some application fee if you don't get a uh, scholarship with uh, application fee waiver. So basically, it's good to get dollar card to just have it and then you'll be able to pay some, not just application fee that will be limiting your chances. So uh, let me just share a, a particular website where we do make some exchange on the likes so that you you'll be able to know some of the exchange rates that uh, is available. So here is uh, GME remittance. I'm not an affiliate of GME remittance. I, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm not advertising them, but I'm just letting you know that this is one of those means where we, uh, Nigerian do send money and they will often want to use this exchange because it's, it's, um, it's not, uh, what's it called? It's not that is it's, it's better for them in sense that the exchange rate is okay. So anyway, so moving forward, uh, we uh, another concern in the application process has to do with the submission of documents. Yeah, submission of documents is something that's worth concern about, especially when you can submit application and uh, documents for in some application using just uh, email. But here, most South Korean website, most South Korean university does not really prefer send, submitting application via email. So 
we uh, some may require you to send or many will require you to send your certificate so there are two options the first one is you send your original certificate so they will return back your original certificate but you also you need to use a reliable sending means you can use dhl you can use cms but i mean uh it's just depending on you so just try to use a reliable sending means so that your what's it called the document to be guaranteed so you can send your original certificates don't be scared provided you don't have other scholarship that you are looking for to anyway that will require you to send certificates so i during my application i sent my original certificates to south korea mine is a bit much more difficult anyway because i did my masters in egypt and then i need to send my documents from egypt this 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 and some process like that so the other alternative is for you to do photocopy and then go to a uh, notary lawyers uh, to notarize it for you lawyers i mean so, so you're going to pay some amount for each of those documents they notarize it and you can send the what's it called you can send the photocopy of your certificate to south korea but i just want you to know that if you eventually get the admission you will still eventually send the original certificate so that's just it uh, as for sending via email the option is weak because there is high probability that they will not accept but if they eventually accept because during covid 19 we have scholars that requested their, their certificate to be sent by email and they granted it because COVID-19 was an exceptional uh, situation for every country. Even US, even US was uh, waiving application fee, GRE was waived and some other stuff like that. So, <laughs> but you can try it out anyway, just reach out to the school uh, or the admission department that you have this difficulty in sending your certificates, can you send by email? So if they grant it, that's good. Uh, but uh, another concern around sending of admission uh, document is the expenses. Like if you want to send documents via DHL, it's quite expensive. Sometimes it could be up to like 30 or 40,000 Naira. So which is a bit kind of expensive. So a shortcut around, around it is kind of having like, uh, instead of sending individually, we do uh, like group sending. Okay, I don't know. Is Nipost still functioning? <laughs> I don't know, but I think uh, instead of Nipost, I think EMS, most of these Nipost, uh, what's it called, is uh, they are uh, more like EMS stuff like that. So, I mean, EMS is a bit cheaper than DHL, but then it takes longer time. I think they use uh, ship cargo something to ship mail. I don't know, but that's what I heard anyway. So, it takes longer time and according to the schedule in the admission process if you look at the schedule the period is usually short something around one week or so let's take a look at the application process so if you want to send the document to send, send submission of application documents yeah the original document and uh, the document anyway so i think it's around october let's say october 17 to november 10 this period i think that is around one month so to say less than one month so if you are sure you are going to send the document if you have was it confirmed that then one month is okay just be sure that it will reach south korea within that period but nipos i don't i'm not sure nipos is still functioning like that i'm sorry I, that's what i just know because what i want when i wanted to send my I eventually used DHL, but then I attempted EMS. So, yeah, your document may just to be kind of be guaranteed. I mean, they are well known name. So, anyway, so and if you want to beat down the price of DHL, group of scholars can just come together and then they send as a group. So I am kind of tabling this to the ISF community i know it's not a company it's just a voluntary uh, set of people that uh, set of scholars that 
are trying to work to uh, give back to the community something they were not able to get while they are searching for their scholarship so i mean nobody is paying everything free but i'm kind of suggesting to the community if they can create something like a body like uh, like a body group so uh, my south korean body my uh, tofu body like so that people that are applying for the same thing during this particular period they will be able to come together and say okay uh we i want to send this particular document to south korea who is also sending so then by sending together you'll be able to bid on the price for instance when i was applying for my master's uh, sorry for my phd i i there are um, community of scholars that are uh, nigerians that are already established here so they just get us together like okay you you are sending from Ilorin, you are sending from ibadan why don't you send send your document to through commercial transport to this person collect it together those in the southwest just collect it together and we are able to send something that should have worth like forty thousand we eventually sent it at like five thousand i paid five thousand i think four thousand five thousand naira for my own document i mean my own portion of the uh, sending so it's quite we, we were able to beat down the price because basically it's 0 0.5 kilo uh, kilogram that's that you are not going to exceed because it's just certificate and when you are not your certificate is not in gold you definitely won't meet that size uh enough of the talking the other thing here is financial documents which you may not really get to know early and then that's just the privilege of this community and uh, this isf community bringing something like this to your knee uh, to your doorstep so to say so basically the financial documents in most of these schools there is not the school that are being strict about the financial document but is more or less like the, the immigration policy so because the immigration policy says that uh, you have financial document of eighteen thousand dollars so the school wants to just filter out people at that stage so you need to have minimum of eighteen thousand dollars in a, in your account i mean people will be thinking if i have eighteen thousand dollars is it south korea that i'll be looking forward to but anyway uh just don't be scared about the eighteen thousand dollars anyway but uh number one way forward because is to contact your professor just reach out to your prospective professor like okay this financial documents you should this 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 and if the professor will be providing for you it's good you know the implication the number one implication is that if your professor should submit your financial is or a financial document on your behalf the person the professor will not be able to get or will not be able to support another student until you graduate that's the new policy so it's good don't look at south korea as a like a second option because you will be blocking way for other nigerians once you have applied and then you eventually decide that you eventually decide that okay uh you want to you are not you are no longer applying and the professor has submitted a financial document on your behalf you may be disappointing the professor and blocking with other nigerians the other way around is or the other alternative is for you to use yourself as a sponsor and which you need to have financial document or uh, uh, around this amount you can source from friend and family and the likes so i mean that ends the concern but then i just want to give you some tips that we've encountered during this presentation the first thing is try try to be visiting the korean version of school websites because some of these websites are much more the korean version are much more updated than the english version so it's good you just update the and uh, visit the korean version to get full privilege so the other thing is exercise patient before sending code email and this is not something that is uh kind of well established but it's something that we get from some experience kind of uh like for instance some uh, most of these professors they discuss among themselves and then you'll be surprised that the email you send you blasted to this professor is the same email you blasted to this professor and then they get, end up discovering that this guy is not a serious person. So he's just trying to, what is it called? So tailor the emails to the specific professor and try to express, exercise patience 
while sending email. Like, don't just broadcast email and expect response. Send to some prof a professor, ex if it's in the same department, exercise patient, or try to tailor specifically to that professor. Then, secondly, is don't worry about the uh, semester-based scholarship. Yeah, it's something to worry about, but don't really worry because uh, that's how they administer scholarship here. They give you semester based. So if you don't get in the subsequent semester, your um, professor that is financing your what's it called? You can borrow from professor, or you can decide to be paying in installments. Like for instance, I got a fifty percent scholarship, and I decided to spread it across four months. So I will pay paying in installments. So you can also do that. And also don't limit your search to your domain. This is very important. I would like to let you know that South Korea, most of our labs, they are multidisciplinary. And then you will be surprised. In my own lab, this is robotics and artificial intelligence. I have someone that did linguistic in undergraduate that eventually came to my lab to do masters and PA, currently she's doing PhD. I mean, linguistic and robotics, what's the relationship? So, but eventually um, the, the, the lab is kind of multidisciplinary and then you can, we tend to eventually apply artificial intelligence to linguistic. So she's doing something on language processing and the likes and the likes. So what I'm trying to drive at is that don't limit, because you, are, you did mathematics, you are now searching for mathematics department. Uh, what's it called? Science, uh, computer science, uh, artificial intelligence department. They need mathematics. Physics need mathematics. So you can do what's it called? Do well by just looking into mathematics. And in fact, you did education. You might maybe you did childhood education, early childhood education. Don't be surprised. You have prospect in what's it called? In um, sciences. For instance, this is just a personal experience. My wife did uh, accounting education. Now she is doing, uh, she is in the engineering department doing, uh, what's it called, uh, style and the likes. So I mean, just because she had some experience with leather works and the likes, and she is doing masters in that. So don't just limit your background. That's just the basic point. So, and in fact, the lab that you are targeting, you are looking at, oh, I'm looking at silicon photonics lab and um, that's what they will be doing. You might be surprised they are doing something relating to chemistry in their department. So anyway, that's just that. And here are some of the sources where I got some of the information from. You can do well to just check Nigerian Student Association, Kempok National University. Check out their website, nsaknu.com. You'll be able to get some information on how things go. And, and also, for all information about scholarship or study in South Korea, Check studyinsouthkorea.go.kr for the most of the information that you might be needing. Thank you so much. Can Sam me there? <laughs> Thank you very much for that, sir. We really appreciate you. And uh, it was a, a well-delivered uh, uh, lecture full of uh, knowledge and um, uh, a lot of insight for every one of us to pick from. I believe some of us have questions will have started jotting. And uh, uh, personally for me, I would say that uh, uh, scholarship, I used to tell people seeking for scholarship is even on the more than seeking for a job. So if you're seeking for a scholarship, you need to be more in, you need, you need to be intentional about it. Like you need to be ready to sacrifice your time and everything. So uh, we pray that God will, uh, in his way, help us to appreciate what you have uh, given us today. So uh, before we take questions, I think it is better for us to just go to Scholar Ashraf and um, once it is done, then we'll take the general question from everyone. Thank you once again. So uh, Scholar Ashraf, over to you now, sir. Thank you so much. Um, uh, it's been a pleasure being with you uh, here all the way. I can say that uh, my boss, engineer Obasi Kore Ahmed, has uh, as uh, surgically examined and uh, he has successfully demystified the i would say 90 percent of scholarships in korea 
In fact, some information that are new to me, I'm getting it from his uh, talk. So I would like to start my own talk from the fact that this is uh, uh, what we've listened to so far has covered about 90% of everything about scholarship. The one, the part I'm going to be talking about is even the easiest. No, no, no. It's even the most, is the complicated part because uh, most of the scholars in Korea, they came through this process of uh, seeking through uh, professors, uh, professorial admission, not through uh, university, not through South Korean government scholarship. So once again, I would like to introduce myself as Asha Bakintola, and I've been introduced as a poet, a researcher, an entrepreneur, uh, of, uh, uh, as it has been described to us. So in my own talk, uh, I wouldn't take much of our time because right now I'm in Nigeria and uh, I can see, as I'm seeing a scholar of Basi Korea delivering the lecture, I was like, oh, if I'm also in South Korea and I saw I'm going to deliver a lecture, Farabale. But when I just came in, I saw that the amount of people, the amount of naira people spend on the chat kind of subscription, I said, ah, you know, it's easy, you know, easy to come to online uh, webinar and start listening to lectures. So it is better that whatever we've been listening to so far from the beginning of the lecture, you should put it into practice. So I'll go straight into two major or three, three scholarship programs in Korea. So I'm sorry I didn't come into PPT. Um, yeah, so Nigerian factor, electricity, blah, 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 blah. So please bear with me. But I would like to, I will try to make it as lively as possible. So first, there are three different scholarships I would like to talk about that, are, that is different to the one a uh, scholar has said. So the first one is the Koika scholarship. Most of people that are here on the pop platform might not could be qualified for that scholarship program, which is the Koika scholarship program. Koika scholarship program is a scholarship program that is set aside for government workers to countries that Korea has collaboration with. Nigeria has collaboration with South Korea on the Koika scholarship program. So that is one important scholarship that is the creme de la creme. And they say creme de la creme of scholarships in South Korea, Koika is number one. Why? because all your living expenses, insurance, travel expenses, everything, stipend will be provided for you. Housing will be provided for you in this Koika scholarship program. And it's the choicest and the best of all scholarships in South Korea. And this scholarship, and now they've extended the uh, outreach of the scholarship. Before it was only specified for those who are in the agri uh, part, agri sector, maybe you are a government worker in your country, so and you are working in areas of agriculture, maybe Ministry of Agri or parastatas that are related to agriculture. Those are the scholarship. Those are the people that are entitled to this Koika scholarship. But now the program has expanded, and usually the program covers for master's degree program. So it is only for government workers in countries that are, are related or have collaboration with South Korea. But now, so I know most of us here might not be government workers. So, uh, just, so that's why it's safe to say that we shouldn't dwell much on that Koika scholarship. But, but I will be an hypocrite to tell you that some people who are not government workers are not getting that scholarship. We know how we do our things in Nigeria. We just, we, if you know someone that knows someone that knows someone, they will just give you certificate or recommendation that hey, I recommend this person, blah, 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 and then you move on to. So there are people that are getting it that are not even government workers that are having the opportunity to get the Koika scholarship. So thank you for sending the link, Koika scholarship. The link has been sent to us on the chat so you can uh, explore it and examine or see more about the Koika scholarship program. So that is Koika. So I won't waste our time on that because the large uh, percentage of those who are here might not be a benef uh, beneficiary, officially, official beneficiary of Koika scholarship. Now, the second one is the KGSP. I would like you to go to gks.com. Uh, uh, k k I've forgotten. Maybe Scholar Obasi will remember. We will send the link through the chat. So the, we call it GKS scholarship, Government Korean Scholarship or KGSP scholarship, Korean Government Scholarship Program. 
This is the second in the ranking of scholarships in South Korea. In terms of welfare, in terms of being taken care of, in terms of the freedom you have. I might have missed the part. Maybe uh, Scholar of South Korea haven't discussed about that. When you come through university or professorial scholarship, there is limits to the freedom you will enjoy. So in this scholarship that I, I am talking about, the Koyega government scholarship, you are free because it is government that is paying your salary. So you are not encumbered. You are not, uh, you are not um, uh, under the firm grip of your professor. So you are, free, you are free to a certain extent to explore Korea, to enjoy your life. For those of us who are in government, government, uh, government um, professorial scholarship, like true professor, there is a limit to what we can do because we are not free. We are not the owners of our time. We work nine to six officially in some easy, easy, easy laboratories. But most people, we work like 18 hours every day, even including Sundays. So, but however, it varies. In my own lab, my own, the lab culture in my own laboratory is different from lab culture of uh, engineer Basikore's laboratory. My own might be a little bit uh, easier and uh, engineer Basikore's might even be easier than mine. So it varies. It's not all the same. So not all uh, size fits all. So in this type of scholarship, the KGSP scholarship, you are free to explore Korea. And you can go through gks.go.kr. Thank you for sending it. Thank you. So gks.go.kr. So however, I will just tell you some of the things that uh, you need to do because if you go through this uh, link, it will explain everything you need to know about Korean government scholarship. So in this, the, the one of the ways in which you apply through the GKS or KGSP as it may be, is that uh, you can either apply as through the uh, university uh, route or through the embassy route. So in the university route, you apply to the university directly through the GKS scholarship. So the, the school will select, would examine your results and then they will pass it to NIED. So to examine and then they will give you the they will give the final result. But because of the huge number of com, uh, uh, competition that comes with this application, a huge number of people apply. So they used to draw people like flies. Like even, even if you have first class, it doesn't know a guarantee that you're going to get the scholarship. So, but in that university track, in that university track, so what most people do is that. In the university, for example, if you want to come to Kyungpuk National University and you want to apply through GKS, you will follow the routes, just like Engineer Basikore has explained to us, reaching out to professors directly, telling them you want to apply for GKS and you want to apply, you want to work under them. Now, one good thing is that these professors, they like this kind of free meal because they know that they, are, they won't be the ones to pay your salary and you'll be working for them free of charge. So the government will be paying you, but you'll be working under them. All your results, all your research results will be under their name. You'll be, of course, you'll be having your name in the paper or the research, but you, they will be a beneficiary. It's like saying someone, you want to be an apprentice to this particular, maybe you want to learn fashion designing, but someone will be the one paying your feeding, your housing, your accommodation, but it is the ogre that is teaching you that will be getting the accolades. So that's exactly that. So what people do is that they will reach out. What you can do as, a, as an applicant is that you reach out to the professor you want to apply to the university. For example, KN, KNU, you want to apply to robotics lab. You just tell Engineer Basikore, please give me your professor's link, email, so that I can tell him that I want to apply for GKS and I want to pick him as his professor. So that way, you, have, you would have developed a rapport with the intended professor you are going into this, this lab. So once that has been established, and then you, be, you, gain the, you begin your journey. So that professor, along with your application to the, uh, to the university track, will give you a recommendation. And then in, when they are examining your, certificate, uh, your, your documents, they can say, okay, this one has more weight. He has done this, he has done that. So that's by the way. But it's not a guarantee that you'll be selected. Some people did it. But they were not selected. So I have people like that that have done that once. And some did it, some people did it and they eventually get selected. So it's a game of chance. The other part is the embassy track. The embassy track is a little bit tricky because every country has the number of slots that have been apportioned to it. So if 
Nigeria has 12 slots. So it was later, I later uh, discovered that even this number of slots that is given to each country, they used to divide it by catchment area. So let's say Nigeria is given a slot of 12 students. So they will still divide that slot of 12 students by catchment area, irrespective of your degree. So let's say catchment area, they will give Southwest six, North Central two, North East one. So even if you are planning like 20, let's say you apply uh, to the embassy track, like 20 of you from Lagos, Ibadan, Lagos, or your Ogun, Oshun, Oshun, Ekiti, Kwara, Oshun, Ekiti. So the Southwestern state, 20 people applied. So they will first of all screen your document and they will just pick six. Let's say they gave Nigeria 12 and it's not even up to that. Maybe I think seven or so. So they, per year, seven students per year. So they'll just screen. They'll just pick out of those ones. They'll just pick the ones that they need, irrespective of your certificate. Now, your qualification might be far, 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 far higher than the one that they will pick from North Central. So, but that is Nigeria. Uh, that is the catchment area division for you, just to make it a national, the national cake to go around. So that is one. That is one aspect of the embassy track. So having said that, so. The, you pass through all these uh, orders and normal orders and then you scale through or as has been stated in the process procedure. Now, the benefit that might interest you is that for one year, you'll be uh, mandated to go for Korean language study. And if you do not pass that Korean language, you are not going to start your, you are not going to start your academic uh, journey. So one year extra, your one year you study Korea, they will be paying your salary, they will give you house, they will give you everything, they will be giving you anything you need. So you have to pass topic three, at least topic three. So and those that have done it, they did it wonderfully. So one thing about Korean language is that I know a lot of people might have even started developing interest from right from home because of the Korean movies, K-pop and the likes. But Korea, you have to learn it if you are part of this, uh, if you are selected for GKS scholarship. For one year, you will learn Korea, and then you would uh, get the uh, benefits. For one year, learn Korea, and then after that one year, you'll be sent, you'll be placed into the university that you intended to, yeah, that you intend to go for. And then one thing, the bene one benefit of this GKS scholarship above all other scholarships, even Quaker, is that your livelihood in Korea, you will enjoy it so much because one of the limitations that you have staying in Korea is the language barrier. But if you've been able to succumb or if you are you're successful in the language acquisition through the Co Korea is paying you to learn their language. So it's another benefit. So and then it will make your life in Korea easier because Koreans, they love it when you, they, you speak their language. Even if you are going to the man, like, ah, chincha, charayo, hangungo charayo, they will be like, they will be very happy. They will be easy. They will be free to communicate with you. You have much benefit. One thing about Koreans is that they are very, very hospitable. Very, very hospitable set of people. So you have a lot of benefit from learning their languages. So that is one benefit that GKS has other over other scholarship. Another thing is that as a GKS scholar, if you you can either come through undergraduate i know most of our audience here they are coming for postgraduate studies so you can go through undergraduate now from that undergraduate studies as a gks scholar you have benefits you have an edge you can continue your graduate studies with that gks masters do phd you can do it under gks so that's one of the benefits unlike for if you gain admission through the first uh, procedure that uh, Scholar Waskar has explained to us, which is university uh, like applying through professors, you would not be able to apply. You will not be able to apply for GKS or COICA anymore. So that's one of the things that uh, that's one of the things we have to know that if you want to go for GKS, go for GKS first. Try GKS first. If that one did not work out, and here you can now try uh, the embassy track because. If you try embassy tag and you later get uh, uh, um, uh, GKS, so it will be a problem for you. So because we too, when we got to Korea, when we wanted to switch from after masters, let me also do GKS. Uh, you cannot do GKS so, because you are already here in Korea already. So that's one of the things that we have to know when we are applying. So that is uh, GKS for us. You can read more 
on through the link that has been sent to us. So there is no, I, I just have to tell uh, some of the loopholes or some of the things that we can explore. Now, that is that about uh, GKS. The third part is uh, we call uh, that scholarship PSPS scholarship. It is not common. It is not common. So this PSPS scholarship is one of the choicest scholarship and it's usually for master's degree. And it's not in all universities. Is in Yongnam University in Daegu, South Korea. So if you want to search, just search for PSPS, Yongnam University, PSPS scholarship, Yongnam University. I, I think uh, uh, we can, uh, the, we will send the link or the name for you to search. So PSPS, Yongnam University, South Korea, Daegu, South Korea. So in that scholarship, it's uh, usually for, not for, re, uh, it's not usually for science-based courses. It's for policy, economics, agric extension, sociology, and all types of that, all those types of courses that are not core science. But there are core sciences that they do the, that course and people get it. And one of the major reasons that people get is that a lot of people do not know about that scholarship, except if you are in Korea and you have somebody in Korea that will tell you about this PSPS, Young Nam University Scholarship. And it's only in one university, Young Nam University. So, one thing is that in this scholarship, it is similar to GKS in terms of salary that you stipend or stipend, let me call it stipend, not salary, stipend that you'll be getting. So almost $1,000 per month. So, and then your school, 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 school fees will be paid. And uh, there are other arrangements that are surrounding that. But one, another thing is that you will have your freedom. Now, the reason why I've, I've mentioned freedom in, again, in this type of scholarship is that coming to Korea is not the problem. When you get to Korea, the reality will sink in that, oh my God, uh, have I not make a mis made a mistake like this regarding the type of the scrutiny? Like, you don't have your time, your me time. Like, some people don't want to, they will think that when you get to Korea, you're going to, go to a, a BTS concert. If you, if you are a researcher, you will not have time for all those things. Some people will be like, ah, have you, are you in Korea? Ah, well, good, good. Do you know this, Kenny? Do you know this? I don't know anything. Because 24-7, you are in the lab. So that is why if you want to come, try to explore scholarships that are, will give you a lot of freedom. So if that one is not available, then you try other ones, you try other ones. So in PSPS, you enjoy a lot of freedom. At least you only go to classes when you have course, when you have classes. Unlike in the first uh, instance, whereby either you have anything to do, you don't have anything to do. It's as if you are on a job. You are as if you are on a job. So that is that's about uh, that is uh, one specific thing about PSPS. So you have a lot of freedom. So you only go to classes when you have classes. So and you are not even attached hundred percent to a particular professor, a particular lab. Of course, when you want to do your project, you will be attached to a professor, a lab, to do your project. But it's not as if that you'll be going there every day, 24, 24 hours every day, 24 hours every day, seven days a week. So that is one thing that we have to note in when applying for all these scholarships. We have to know the pros and the cons. You can't say we want to, because we want to demystify, we have to tell you some of the things that is behind all the scholarship that we are applying for. So that when you know get here and you'll be thinking, ah, uh, oh, uh, they did not tell us this. So, so that is one thing that we have to, uh, tell you about this is part of demystifying Korean, Korean scholarships. So, and uh, I want to, after the PSPS, now each university, they have different scholarship program. Each university have different scholarship programs. It is only, except you know, that you know. There are some scholarship, there are some schools, for example, GIST, K-A-I-S-T, GIST is the um, Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology. KIST is a, uh, um, I've forgotten the full meaning, KIST. There is also Poan Institute of Science and Technologies. So in these universities, their own scholar application is different to the type that Engine of Ascola has also explained to us. In their own, one of the benefits is that a graduate of these universities, KAIST, GIST, and those institutes of science and technology. If you are looking for any scholarship and they say institutes of science and technology in Korea, please just grab it with both hands. If you get admission, grab it with both hands. Because one of the benefits is that even we in Korea, we are jealous of students that are in that university. Why? Because now Korea government has uh, put down a practice whereby graduates of these universities, 
they are on a path to becoming permanent residences, permanent residents in South Korea. It will interest you to know that if you are applying to this scholarship because of you want to Japa, I would tell you that Korea is not the best way for you to get Japa if you want to Japa, Japa in the Japa sense. Yes, Korea can be a link for you to Japa to other places. Yes, that, that is a very good answer. But if you are planning to Korea, this is your Japa destination. I will tell you to please Farabale because as a, if you even if you are living 10 years here in Korea, you are not and you are not doing something so you, you are still on your own because you don't have you wouldn't have the permanent residence op opportunity. Even you spend 10 years here, you only be renewing your visa, but you will not have permanent residency status in Korea. So it's a long process. One of the ways in which you can get permanent residency is to learn the Korean language. Learn it, master it, speak it more than even the Koreans themselves. So that's one of the benefits. So, but as a graduate of GIST or Poang Institute of Technology or KIST or all those institutes of science and technology, the benefit is that you are on a path to permanent. They just started this process procedure now, uh, this recently, maybe a month or so before I left Korea. So this is one of the benefits that you are going to uh, get when you apply or get admission into these universities. So that is uh, just a little bit of summary because of uh, uh, because I know a lot of people are already encumbered by that. So uh, I would like to please give me, uh, uh, let me pause the while. So any other questions, Engineer Basakuri would, uh, and you know, West Korea will be uh, answering the questions. So I would like to seek your permission to uh, leave right now so that uh, we pray Almighty God will grant us, assist us in uh, everything that we are laying our hands on regarding this uh, scholarship procedure. And again, I would like to uh, inform you that scholarship application is grace. It's not compulsory that every one of us gets scholarship. Whatever you are doing right now, do it well. It might be your ticket to prosperity. It might be your ticket to success. So it's not every one of us that will be a beneficiary of scholarships. Even though there are 1,001 scholarships out there, not everyone will get the opportunity to be a beneficiary. May Almighty God assist us in all our endeavors. So thank you so much. Please permit me to leave right now. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> uh thank you very much uh really appreciate the the session with you and um we pray that the almighty will uh grant you uh your secret prayers and the open words uh honestly you have really uh given us uh the very best part of it just like our uh, engineer obase korea has did as well and um you know i i would like to say that um, um it's a great thing with the fact that you were able to even give us like um the fact about uh these applications uh, saying uh uh to means for me to jump but this probably uh on a larger percentage or i don't want to give a, a statistics here but um i think uh people do make this mistake of saying yes this is the chance to jump and uh, you know once we are able to know like okay these are the things involved in these things i believe an individual should not make uh, a mistake in that very end so uh without any further ado um uh, we would like to take questions now and um um we will give it to uh scholars um i don't know if uh scholar ahmed will be uh glad to have those questions as uh, scholar ashraf has asked for permission to leave the call uh okay i will be able to answer the ones that are in my capacity and okay. uh, definitely you, yeah. those that i don't know i would i don't know so uh, i i I'll, I'll also be coming in a little bit just okay, cool. uh, we leave the floor to you for anyone you means i will assist in my own capacity too. <laughs> okay. thank you so uh we'll take our questions now and then um, Maybe I should just build the card and um, ask uh, a few of mine. So I, I think the, the first thing I have is um, uh, I think a large a large number of people have this concern about um, 
the situation in Korea being like probably a strict place to study and, and stuff like that. I know scholar uh, Ashraf has said uh, some few things about um, the, uh, I think, um, the schedule that can be in different uh, labs uh, as regards even different applications. So uh, I would like to ask how about like the community at large? Well, um... As regarding the work culture, uh, Scholar Ashraf has actually said the blunt truth about it. So uh, really, uh, the first concern is in twofold, regarding the language and also regarding the work culture. So for instance, you can have the privilege of taking some courses that are in English. Like for instance, in my school, yeah, some courses, or you can look for some professor that teaches some courses in English. So basically, you will be able to get the full advantage of the courses like English uh, taught. But however, many of the courses are going to be taught in Korean, or they are more Korean uh, taught class. Yeah, basically, the class is taught in all the explanation and everything is done in Korean, but many times the presentation and some, especially for science and technology um, courses, the presentation are in English. So back to where we are saying is that for the courses or for classes and the likes, you may have the privilege of some courses that are taught in English, but however, many of the subjects or many of the courses are taught and uh, you get so many courses that are taught or explained in korean now as for the work culture yeah many koreans uh, the koreans actually do work a lot anyway so i mean they have extended period of working so and they do expect you to also work as much as that but this is actually subject to the nature of your lab take for instance we have some colleagues here that their labs is so flexible that, okay, you can decide to, instead of working during the day, maybe you are not comfortable with working during the day, you may decide to come at night to do your work. Some, you may just like, okay, uh, instead of, uh, let's say during the day you are tired and you don't feel like you are okay with the time, you can just go home, go and sleep. But for some other labs, that is not really the flexibility that they can enjoy. Uh, this, you have to resume by 9. I mean, for some labs, I mean, you have to resume by 9 and you close by maybe 9 p.m. at night or maybe 6 p.m. at night. So some labs are like that. Okay. So if you come by maybe 9.30 or 9, 10 minutes after 9, that is not a comfortable place because... Professor will categorically tell you, or my categorically tell you that my lab is nine to six. So you can't be coming by nine, five minutes after nine or 10 minutes after nine. It's nine. So, so there, then you can spend beyond six o'clock, like spend stay like up to seven, eight, nine, ten at night. That is not the concern. You are working, okay, fine, but you resume at this time and you close at this time. That's just the officially stipulated uh, lab working hour. So, I mean, they are strict with their, the schedule for some labs and for many labs anyway. So, I mean, I don't know whether I answered the, I might not have answered it exactly as you think, but that's how I think I can limit the scope of the question. I, I think you are muted, uh, Abdullah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to thank him for uh, the response to the question, but uh, mm. I'm glad I got that response, actually. Uh, however, I, I don't know if you have um, given the response to uh, the other questions as regards if uh, an HND older or HND older rather can uh, actually apply for a master's in South Korea. Mm. Can I quickly answer that? Please go ahead, sir. Okay, sir. So, yeah, it's very, very, very possible. 
And uh, I think one of the mistakes a lot of people do make is that uh, um, they are always over worried about their class of degree when they are applying for uh, scholarships of uh, high repute, especially when it comes to um, going through Professor Link. So I think, for example, if you are a Tutu graduate, we are always scared of our Tutu. Without a first classic person, I can't have a, a chance. Whereas it is not always like that. So mm -hmm. mostly, what professors need is your research ability, especially in South Korea. It's not about the academics or oh, you can cram la peau. It's your research ability. If you can perform research properly, then you are good to go regarding your uh, getting positions. So, but if you are not good in research, that might be a problem for you. And you are not good, you're academically not sound. That might be a problem. So uh, now to the question, as an HND holder, you are very, very much liable to get masters. You don't need to start all over again. So there is to give you all an idea. There is what we call West. I think uh, uh, the West is one of the ways in which you can standardize your certificate as an HND holder or as a polytechnic graduate. Even as a bachelor degree holder, so you can use that West to evaluate your certificate. So that is uh, that is one way. So as an HND holder. Is very, very easy. Don't let me say easy. So you are, there is no restriction for you that you cannot apply for masters in South Korea. So just apply and then know how to walk your way through and then you'll be selected. God really. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you for the response, sir. Um, um, Abouz, I don't know if you have other questions from the WhatsApp group. I don't know. I don't have access currently. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much. While we are still waiting for other questions, so I would, I have, I would like to thank our two speakers, so Scholar Amir Shikore and uh, Scholar Ashraf Akintola, so for taking their time to, I mean, uh, diversify every thing that has to, all what uh, that has to do with this uh, scholarship. So I'm aware, probably in Korea right now, maybe they are around uh, 2 a.m. or so. So thank you so much for taking your time to educate our scholars. We pray, Almighty God, ease all your affairs and be with you in all your endeavors. So then we would like to, I mean, specifically thank uh, Scholar Obashi Kore. You know, he's been one of the active member in the group. And if you don't know, Scholar Obashi Kore is the chairman of our website committee. So all what you see uh, on hotspotism.com, so he's been the one in charge of it. So we pray God be with you. And likewise, Scholar Ashraf, so I think this is the second time he's going to give, I mean, a talk on HISF webinar. And anytime we call on them, so either him or Scholar Bashi Kodi, so they, I mean, I see to our request. So I think we should also learn one or two lessons from this. So when we, I mean, let's try and inculcate the habit of helping others. So if you have a knowledge, I mean, if you, are, if you have something, you are in possession of a knowledge, so then it is advisable to, I mean, spread it to others. So it's a way of giving back. Please let us try and, I mean, uh, participate in all what, I mean, all our activities on the platform. So if you can give a talk on any scholarship or anything that has to do with academics, feel free to reach us. So, and even, even if you can't give a talk on the HISF webinar, you can, try and join any of the committee so the door is open the group belongs to all of us and please uh, in i mean the new year message that was sent to the group so it's very funny that despite the fact that we are more than 5000 on the in the community so we are still <laughs> here to have like 1000 subscribers on our youtube channel so please if you have not done so so try and subscribe to our channel. 
So all nobody, I mean, uh, the, the group is for non-profits. So, but we need some funds to maintain some other activities on the group, like our website, and you know all these uh, resources we are using. So may God be with you and ease all your fears. So that's I mean what I need to see. But I think there is one more question. So that somebody has a question here. Yeah. Okay, he said, "Um, Francis, I your daily but I must see a master's order in medical microbiology." So he says, "I would like to do a PhD in South Korea." in bioinformatics. I think it has been taken yes, care of the scholar Ashraf. I mean, uh, like to put more points on it anyway. I don't know. Yeah, scholar Bashikori, probably you can say something about. Do you get a question? Hello. Yes, I get the question. So, uh, I, I, I think the uh, scholar Badamosi Francis, you might want to go back and watch the video. So uh, they've given all the necessary, uh, all what you need to apply for scholarship in South Korea, minutes, masters or PhD. So you might want to go to some of the websites, the recommended or contact, I mean, uh, some of the professors in your area of specialization. So I think that should help you. So I don't think there are other questions. I've checked the chat here. So I, I think there is there is one question asking if there is a um, uh, requirement for GRE or TOEFL for any program in South Korea. Okay. So uh, as for GRE, I don't think um, most schools in South Korea doesn't require GRE. But for TOEFL, uh, let me start with my own school. Some departments actually do specifically request that you have to do TOEFL. I mean, to uh, to get a chance of getting scholarship in the department. So specifically for my own school. So and there are some other schools in South Korea that like that that requires TOEFL to what is it called to to get admission so but not all like for instance in the same school where which i am my department does not really require me to do um tofu or during the application process so so is it depends on the department and also depend on the school okay so it's not really something that is and um, that there is a central answer to is like no or yes okay so uh, i think uh, for the question asked by scholar ikene okolo so step by step guide so if you follow i mean the first speaker uh, presentation you should be able to do this as well i recommend that you go back to the video after the webinar. So the video will be automatically update, uh, uploaded on our YouTube channel. So with that, you can get all the necessary points. So if you have question after this, just put it there on the chat, board, uh, chat box and we are going to reply you or forward you to the lecturers. Yeah. I don't think there are other questions. Probably we might call it a day because of the time. Yeah, I think uh, just like you have said, because uh, 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 we need to release the uh, scholar or Basikori, especially considering the fact that it's 2 a.m. and you might be having another schedule for tomorrow morning. So we don't want to waste your time. And um, just like I've said at the beginning of the program, you have been a veteran for us on HISF, and um, we can't thank you enough for always being around anytime we call on you. And um, we pray that uh, God will continue to be with you and uh, be a guide and God to you as well and everything that belongs to you. Uh, we say thank you very much for being here with us today. And then to everyone who has been present here, uh, we say thank you very much.
Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the privilege to give back to the society or the community. Yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Scholar Light, thank you also. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, sorry, I forget to kudos to our powerful moderator as well. Uh, scholar Babatunde Abdullah. So thanks for moderating the session. I mean, it was an interesting session. Thank you. And we hope you are still going to, I mean, assist in moderating subsequent, I mean, uh, uh, webinars. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone. So don't forget next week we'll be having, I mean, uh, a new, uh, we'll be having our, our webinar next week will be on AIM scholarship, how to win African Institute of Mathematical Science scholarship. So please uh, stay tuned. If you've not subscribed again, can you do so? So and click on the back, back button so that you get notified anytime we post new video. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah.